Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashtabs and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm not going to be showing you how to build a minting dApp, instead Shivam is. You've seen Shivam on my channel before and he's going to take us through how to build a minting dApp using 3rd web. Now if you feel a bit lost, you can watch this 3rd web with Hashtabs playlist. If you go there, there's a bunch of videos explaining the dashboard. But this video is going to be a bit more technical. Because of the complexity, I don't want you to feel lost. If you do, go to hashups.online and go and join our Discord server. There are thousands of devs that's willing to help you out with your questions. That being said, don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and comment below if you enjoy the content. Now. Over to Shivam. Hello guys and welcome to this channel. Today we are building a React minting tab that will allow the users to mint the NFT drop collection that we deployed earlier in this series using the third web dashboard. Now we would be needing the contract address for this particular deployment, but we'll come back to this later. Let's have a look at the code base before. To get a hold of this code base, all you need to do is clone the repository from the description below and you should be good to go. In this application, what we are building is a simple connect wallet and a mint button that will allow the information to be pulled off from blockchain and also allow the users to mint that NFT to their particular wallet. The data is completely dummy, but we are going to soon replace that with the data coming from blockchain. We'll also be using the third web SDK and the third web react SDK to fetch that information from blockchain. Without any further ado, let's jump on to coding. The first thing that we'll do is we are going to install the SDK using yarn here. So I'm going to write the commands yarn add at third web hyphen dev slash SDK. We're also going to include the third web hyphen dev slash react SDK. And there's also a peer dependency for ethers which is a library that allows you to connect to blockchain written on top of Web3. We're going to add this now. As soon as this is added, we should first go to the package.json and check whether the libraries have been installed correctly or not. Now, during the time of this recording, the SDK versions are 2.4.1 for the React, 2.3.11 for the SDK, and 5.6.8 for the ethers library. The first thing that we'll do now is head over to main.tsx and include the third web provider and going to import this from the react sdk this provider would allow us to configure the width chain to connect to different options for the wallets to connect as a context to the underlying application and we'll be easily able to use that inside our app.tsx i'm also going to add the desired chain id here which is polygon mobile so let's do that now desired chain id is equal to chain id dot mobi and we can import the chain id from the react helper here so i'm now moving on to app.tsx the first thing that we are going to do here is a hook helper from the third web library which is called use nft drop and here we'll be passing the contract address later just going to create like a contract address variable here that we can refer to that I will define later. One thing that we also need is use metadata. In fact, we'll use the use contract metadata helper library here. We're going to again use contract address variable. Let us define the contract address variable here. So this is actually the contract instance of our drop collection. And here we get back a data attribute just going to call that contract metadata for now because we'll start replacing the dummy data that we have using the data that we get from the contract so now to access the metadata we actually need to pass in the contract address from the dashboard so I'm just going to head over to the dashboard and grab this contract address here by clicking it we have copied the address now i'm going back to the app.tsx and actually pasting the contract address right here we'll also move this to a dot env file later but right now 
I think this is exactly what we need. So now one thing that we are going to do is we are going to change this title here to the name that comes from the contract metadata. So to do that, all you need to do is just cut the existing text and replace this with contract metadata question mark dot name. The reason why we put question mark is uh, we don't get the undefined error and uh, this only accesses the sub property if this metadata is defined. On the first load, uh, usually the data would be undefined or null because uh, when you're where the application is really mounted, it first goes to the address, fetches the information from chain and comes back with an updated value. So I'm going to save this now and I'm going to refresh this page. Now you see there's a blank here. This actual information is being fetched from the blockchain. And to verify, we can actually go to the dashboard and see the name property of our contract here. You'll also find the same information if you go in and check out the title here from the dashboard. So now we'll actually do the same for the description as well. I'm going to cut the existing dummy text. I'm going to replace that with contract metadata question mark dot description. I'm going to save it again. Let's just quickly refresh to do a verification. Yes. So now this description is also loaded the same way as the name. You can also go ahead and verify in the dashboard. When you go to the settings, you'll see the description here. And this is the exact same description that's showing up here. Okay, so now there's only one thing that's remaining from the metadata that we need to pull up here is the image. So if you go to the dashboard, we have already added the animated GIF here as the image to the contract. We're going to pull that information here in our UI. Right now, as you can see, we've already included the preview GIF, but that is coming from the local source code I'm going to change this preview GIF to contract metadata question mark dot image and save it again. Let's quickly refresh this to make sure that we fetch the GIF correctly. And yes, now this GIF is actually loaded from the blockchain. To verify, what we can do is we can just do right click and inspect. As you can see, this image is coming from Gateway, which is IPFS. If you want us to talk about IPFS decentral file storage, please mention in the comment below and we may do end up doing a dedicated video for that. Before we proceed, I just noticed the preview GIF has been imported here and not being used. So I'm just going to remove that. Okay, so now we already have the metadata being imported from the blockchain. The next information that we're going to focus on is the mint count here that shows below the GIF the preview GIF, to fetch that information, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the help of the React SDK from third web, which has a nice hook called use claim NFT supply. And we're going to pass it contract, which is the contract instance that comes from the use NFT drop hook. I'm also going to deconstruct this hook, which returns a data attribute. And I'm going to call this data attribute claimed supply and save it. Here in this code where you see the information of the count, I'm just going to replace this zero with named NFT supply. I'm going to do a question mark dot to number. And the reason why I do this is because ethers.js technically returns this value as a big number. So for the React to understand this as a number, we need to use this dot to number function that converts this to a number so now we have the claimed NFT supply count. To get the total value of the supply, we are going to do something interesting. We are actually going to fetch the unclaimed supply count and going to add it here in the front end. So let's go ahead. Just like we used use claim NFT supply count, we could also fetch the used unclaimed NFT supply count. And to do that, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to duplicate this line below. I'm going to change this hook to use unclaimed NFT supply. I'm also going to just add unclaimed NFT supply data attribute. Save this real quick. And then going back to the total count where you have five, I'm going to replace that with claimed NFT supply question mark dot two number plus 
IIT supply dot two dot two number. There's one thing that we'll also do here, just because this is undefined, I'm going to add in an extra or zero case so that we can avoid the error for the undefined. Do the same for our claimed as well. Now, when you save this, let's go ahead and quickly refresh the page. Yes. So you, there are actually five unclaimed NFTs and there are zero that have already been claimed. So this is correct. Now we have the data that we need being fetched from blockchain. The next thing that we need is a way for a user to connect their MetaMask wallet and mint this NFT. For this tutorial, I've already set up my MetaMask account with a new address and I'm going to use this address to mint the NFT. For this, we'll be using a use address hook available from the third web react SDK. This allows us to see if the user is already connected to the client application or not. Let's go ahead and import this hook inside our application. I'm going to say const address is equal to use address. As you can see, the value of address could either be string or undefined. If it's undefined, what it means really is the user is not connected to the tab and needs to connect. To connect, we'll be using MetaMask here. So there's one more helper hook which we could use called use MetaMask and import it from the third web react SDK. This allows the users to connect to the MetaMask wallet. I'm going to use that inside our application now. This hook really exposes a helpful function which we can call to connect to the MetaMask wallet. We are going to hook this function to our button connect wallet and see if it works. Let's go to our button now at the on click property and point it to connect MetaMask and save it. I'm going to refresh here just to make sure that it works. Now let's click the button and see what happens. The MetaMask window pops up and now we can connect to our blockchain account using MetaMask. I'm going to select the development account that I created earlier for this particular tutorial. And I'm going to select next and hit the button connect. Right now we do not see any changes in the interface because we have not yet used the address inside our UI. The connect wallet button is still there because we have not added the conditions to hide it when the address has successfully been connected. We are going to make that change now. I'm going to start by creating an object here and the address double and percentage. I'm going to wrap this. Now I'm just going to duplicate this below and change the address to not defined. The reason why we are doing this now is I want to change this button text to mint. So now you can see the mint button because our wallet is already connected to the chain. What happens when we disconnect our wallet? So I'm just going to go here to the MetaMask wallet and disconnect. And now when I do a refresh, my wallet is disconnected and it again shows the connect wallet button. As soon as I connect the wallet again, following the same steps that we did before, you see the button changes to mint. Next, we are going to create a function that will allow the users to mint this NFT when they click this button. So I'll head over to my code base now. I'll create a function called mint here that will allow us to do the same. I'm also going to make this function asynchronous. Then over here, we'll include a try catch block to catch the errors in case they come in. Inside this block, I'm going to write await contract question mark dot claim. And the quantity would be one because we want to use users to claim only one token at a time. In case of a successful mint, I'm just going to add an alert message here, mint it successfully and I'm just going to log in the error here in case there is an error in minting. Let's make sure to call this button on the click of the mint button here. Now I'm going to save this. Let's quickly refresh this page again. Now my wallet is already connected. So you see the mint button here. As soon as I hit mint, it's going to create a transaction for me to sign. And the MetaMax window pops up. I look at the gas fees here and confirm this transaction. It takes a few seconds for us to finish this successful mint. And you see the message minted successfully. I click OK. So now we see one minted token out of five. Now we have a working application that allows the users to mint the token. Let's quickly clean up our code base and make sure to take care of certain errors. For example, when you refresh this page, you see the content doesn't pop up correctly. Let me do that again. You see the buttons are jumbled up. Let's quickly avoid this by adding a loading text before the content pops up. 
I'll go to the very top here right before it returns the render object. I'm going to write an if condition where if the contract is undefined or if the contract metadata is undefined, I'm just going to return a simple diff that shows the message loading. To save this now and refresh this page, it works as expected. Only thing is I want to center this text now. So I'm just going to add a class, class name. So I'm just going to add a class name, flex item center, class device center. Just going to save it. Also going to give it a min height of screen. Let's quickly check. That's looking a lot better. Let's add some final conditions. The two conditions that we'll be, that we'll be adding today are we will be checking if the user has connected. You would also check if the user is on the right network. So for the first condition, all we need is to check if the address is defined. So we do an inverse condition which says if the address is not defined, we connect using MetaMask and then return because we want the user to get connected to the MetaMask wallet first. And for the second condition, we'll create a variable called is wrong network is wrong network and use the hook called use network mismatch from the third web SDK. This checks if the user is connected to the wrong network. We'll place that under our check condition here. Grab that inside an if statement. So now we need a mechanism to connect the user to the right network, which is Mumbai. For that, we use the use network hook from third web dev SDK again. And then we destructure the hook. The second object that we get is switch network. This is a function that allows you to change the network to your selected network. We're going to use that in our if statement here. We are going to change it to chain ID Mumbai. The switch network could be undefined as well. So we're just going to add an and condition right before it, which makes sure that it's completely defined before we call the function. And we just enter a return statement at the end. This will make sure that the user is connected to the right network before actually minting the application. The final thing that we'll do is disable the button mint if the user is already claiming and the process is ongoing. For that, We'll just create a state variable called claiming and also use the state setter called set claiming. Use state, set it to false for default. Use state is not imported, so I'm going to import it from React now. And when the claiming action begins, we'll set the claiming value to true. And as soon as the claiming is done, we'll set it to false. We'll do the same after the error and save it again. Now we are going to use this claiming variable that we've defined to disable our button when the user is claiming. I'm also going to change this text to claiming when the user is claiming. So if claiming is true, use claiming or use mint. As soon as I save that, I'm going to try that button again, but let's first, let's quickly refresh. Okay, so I'm going to mint this again and the button has been disabled so I can only mint it once. The transactions open up on MetaMask. I hit the confirm button, it's still minting and we see a success message and I place OK. So now you're successfully minted your NFT in your wallet. And that's how you create a minting dApp using third web SDK and React. If you also want us to focus on any topics that were not covered during this tutorial, please mention that in the comment below.